Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. Uh, at the start of the new year, we'll be talking about uh, the fact that, of course, the Prime Minister has spoken about rule of law, dispens uh, dis dispensation of justice, which he said is, uh, you know, essential for any society, but also essentially uh, as far as the National Assembly is concerned, as far as politics generally are concerned. Uh, the information minister's tweet where he talked about the fact that perhaps there should be a lack of, uh, the, our politics can do with the lack of bitterness as far as the opposition and uh, the government is concerned, the relationship of the opposition and the government is concerned. We'll be talking about that uh, vis-a-vis, -vis, of course, uh, the agenda of reform, which the government wants to work on and whether uh, the opposition can agree to have that kind of relationship with the government on these core issues, on issues of uh, economy on issues of uh, reform all of those things uh, which we've been talking about now and again through the year but unfortunately that hasn't happened we've also seen uh, the kind of atmosphere generally um, that uh, results uh, whenever there is uh, mostly whenever there's a joint session when the opposition and the government uh, come uh, at each other they're, they're you know they're at loggerheads with each other the kind of relationship unfortunately that has developed as far as uh, politics generally in Pakistan is concerned is unfortunate we'll be talking about whether that can change um, all of that today um, on the very first day of the new year I have with me Javed Jadoon who's a senior analyst thank you for joining us today um, and uh, we also have with us Ahmed Javad, who is Central uh, Secretary Information PTI. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Faisal Kareem Kundi, who is uh, Leader PPP. Thank you for joining us today. Um, Ji, Javed Sam. Like I said, you know, we have had this discussion before also. We've been talking about lack of bitterness. We've been talking about the fact that, you know, the opposition and the government doesn't ever seem to have that kind of relationship, just a working relationship where they can agree to disagree on things, but also agree on core issues like economy, core issues like reform, um, which are, of course, or should be important to all the politicians, regardless which political party there is, you know, um, as far as agenda of uh, the future is concerned. Uh, of course, you know, the mini mud budget came and we've been hearing so many things as far as the opposition is concerned, the government is concerned. You must have seen what happened as far as uh, in, in the session also. Unfortunate brawling results and, uh, you know, there, there's really a lack of dignity, a lack of... Uh, uh, you know, the seriousness of the house, which is what essentially I think uh, the information minister's tweet is about also. It, it gives a very bad image uh, to the outside, whether it's to the voters or whether it's to, to our parliament or our country as a whole. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Maru. First of all, Happy New Year to all the viewers. Secondly, I think uh, whatever you said in your intro is absolutely relevant to what is happening inside Pakistan. Because uh, Maroc democracy is all about tolerance, all about uh, agreeing to disagree, as you uh, said in your intro as well. But unfortunately in Pakistan, what we are witnessing is uh, probably uh, not a democracy, um, neither parliamentary or any other form of democracy. Yeah. Because uh, the only platform where uh, the uh, politicians or the parliamentarians can agree or disagree is the floor of the house, the National Assembly and the upper house. Uh, but uh, the politics is being, being played out uh, on the electronic media. Uh, the talk shows basically have become so bitter mm. that uh, they invite uh, the representatives from different political parties. They sit there mm. and they level allegations and nothing else. Because... Uh, I think uh, agreeing to disagree is the fundamental uh, to take forward uh, the process of dialogue mm. uh, between all uh, the stakeholders mm. uh, uh, and these stakeholders are the political parties of Pakistan. Mm. Mm. Uh, because uh, once there was uh, PMLN in power, then Pakistan People's Party in power, today it is the PTI and tomorrow uh, could be anyone else in power. So if you leave behind the kind of a legacy which the opposition is leaving behind, uh, they are going to face the same uh, kind of issues and problems when they form a government at the center, uh, at the provinces as well. 
everything being done by the government is not bad and everything being said by the opposition is not bad. Hmm. The problem is because they do not tolerate each other. Opposition is going for the throat of the PTI. But doesn't it derail overall from, uh, you know, the performance of uh, the government, so to speak, if, if the opposition and the government, not, op you know, overall, the kind of image that it sends out also, and the performance overall, um, you know, economic perform performance, for example, if the government and the opposition <coughs> were to agree, um, you know, and or the opposition would oppose on core issues, give out alternatives, that kind of responsible um, opposition, things would be different, don't you think? Yes, I agree. And Marok, to be a devil's advocate, uh, a, a PTI or any uh, political mm. party in power mm. is not, uh, would not be going for such policies which are anti-people and uh, believing that they would be going to the people of Pakistan once again when mm. they go to the, uh, to the elections. Mm. So why any uh, political party while in power would adopt or pursue policies which are mm. anti-people and anti-social mm. and uh, no, no, no political party would like to be unpopular uh, with, the, uh, with the people of Pakistan. So I think the difficulties with the PTI is facing as far as economy is concerned Obviously, uh, the out there, uh, the global factors, the in, the the internal mm. factors. Of course, you can talk about uh, the the level of maturity or the level of uh, handling of the policies is something else which can be debated Let upon. Back to, but yeah. the sincerity of the government, you really can't doubt about that. The same kind of difficulties when which is actually uh, were essentially faced the point where they start from. The opposition starts from doubting the sincerity of any government. Absolutely, which is and the and, and Marok, one point. When uh, these two political parties were in power, they both went to the IMF and there were conditionalities and they had to accept those mm. uh, conditionalities. And now uh, they are uh, telling the people of Pakistan that uh, the mini budget and so on and so forth mm. and creating kind of sentiments which people believe that now they really can't understand whom to believe and whom not to believe. Right, so I think opposition is always is the, is the government in, in, the, in the waiting right. and they Ji, should Jawad, realize that. I'm going to come back to you, uh, Javed Sahib. I'm going to go to Jawad Sahib. Ji, Jawad Sahib, overall, uh, you know, uh, the government also, if you talk to the opposition, uh, the, the opposition members invariably say that the responsibility largely rests with the government uh, to engage the opposition, so to speak. And that hasn't happened. Uh, we haven't seen uh, uh, the government being able, being able to have that kind of engagement with the opposition. Unfortunately, it, it results in brawling, it results in name calling. Uh, overall, uh, the atmosphere of, of the assembly um, ha has become very toxic, so to speak. <clears throat> Maruch, uh, in my opinion, hmm. uh, respecting each other, uh, agree to disagree, and tolerance, uh, uh, mutual respect. It is not uh, responsibility of uh, just the government. I think this is the responsibility of everybody uh, who is in parliament or who are uh, in the talk shows or who are representing their political parties on any forums. Hmm. I think this uh, has a lot to do with our uh, social values and our uh, political values and political culture in our country. Uh, when we talk about uh, riyasat e Medina, uh, in my opinion, uh, I think uh, riyasat e Medina is not a, uh, just the brand of uh, PTI. It is the brand of uh, every Muslim in the world. Uh, uh, every Muslim would like to follow uh, the values and the virtues uh, which were exercised uh, in riyasat e Medina. And one of them is that uh, you have to be uh, very patient, you have to be very tolerant, you have to be very civilized, uh, mm. you must not insult anybody, you must not abuse anybody, mm. you must not ridicule anybody. Mm. So uh, it is all about sanity, and uh, which <clears throat> for us, mm. unfortunately, it has been adopted by the West, and mm. we uh, Muslims overall have forgotten about it. And in mm. Pakistan, uh, I think this political culture uh, existed mm. for a very, very long time. But mm. I think the last spark, uh, mm. I would call social media, which mm. has uh, given it, uh, it, it its intensity to new heights. And uh, now we, we feel the heat, we see the heat uh, in our political conversation wherever we are. 
and uh, it is uh, it is not going down it is every day escalating is it, is it, let me interject is isn't it true that it's more about i mean the social media certainly it's there uh, as it is in all facets of life but isn't it essentially just showing the mirror to what's happening i mean if you look at what happened in the national assembly uh, day day before yesterday if i'm not wrong there was you know the kind of debacle that happened and and it seems to be something that happens um all the time now it seems to be a kind of political culture now with the opposition and the government fighting with each other members of the you know there is just so much ruckus that it takes away from uh, if there is uh, you know now at all i'm sorry to say a sanctity of of the house itself where these laws are supposed to be the bills are supposed to be tabled the laws are supposed to be promulgated i'm sure for for students of law for people otherwise also you know all over it sends a very bad image of of uh, who we are as as legislators as responsible politicians whatever you may want to call it yes uh, maru that is why i said that uh, this political culture has existed in pakistan uh, mm. since years and decades but mm. now the instance uh, intensity is mm. more felt because of the social media that's what i'm saying because today we are uh, uh, seeing these battle grounds every day on twitter mm. and uh, facebook and uh, uh, okay. i think the third in the row is the television channels where mm. battle positions are taken every day and mm. uh, a culture of uh, uh, humiliating a culture of ridiculing each other mm. uh, a culture of abusing and insulting each other uh, mm. has become some kind of uh, heroics uh okay. and they they are seen as uh, uh somebody who, uh, who is uh, uh, uh i mean who is much appreciated on social media or on the media is somebody who can uh, insult who can be more aggressive who can be uh, mm. uh, you know mm. uh, hitting even the below the belt i mean the mm. media also wants to have such kind of uh, demonstrations on the television channels jawad sir let, let's uh, come to the media yeah. i will i will come back to you let's talk about the the role of the media you're saying also is responsible but uh, uh, let me go to rafeeq rajwana sahab leader pml ng rafeeq sahab in, in your opinion i mean as a, as an experienced politician certainly you have also seen i mean the role of uh, not just the government but also the opposition do you think that they that they're acting responsibly you think that they are behaving in a manner that befits uh, their stature as opposition or politicians or people with any kind of uh, you know responsible uh, respectable response to whatever is is going on in the assembly uh thank you very much happy new year to you and all the listeners and the participants uh actually i differ with the question the tenor of the question because you have particularly put a question that the role of the opposition what they are doing in the parliament okay. my uh to my thinking the question should have been the role of the politicians and the parliamentarians okay. the tertiary bench and the opposition and how we can resolve the dispute and how we can come to a conclusion which is for the betterment and welfare of mm. the people and the economic stability and political stability mm. without any intervention and uh, uh, following the rule of law and the constitution mm. according to my humble view okay. the opposition has to play its role no doubt it should be within the limits mm. Mm-hmm. But, but but as far as across the board you know you 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 very interestingly saying something which uh, javed uh, sorry ahmed jawad sahab also said he said that it's, I, it's across the board i didn't listen all the all the discussion my apology i was made to join Gee, but, later but essentially he was saying he was also saying that the responsibility rests across the board and generally i would agree with that and i think yes, um, yes, any yes, sane person would agree that, that that is essentially been, true but because you are from the pmln in your opinion uh, let's talk about particularly the opposition do you think that as as a, as a responsible opposition the opposition itself is doing what it can uh, to uh, you know not to 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 have that kind of culture not to have that kind of uh, atmosphere in the assembly just listen to me there is a word provocation okay constant provocation and the day pti came into being 
and hmm. then PTI came into power. Opposition hmm. has to play its role. They have to oppose the government rightly or wrongly. We'll discuss on this on the later part of my discussion and my answer. Hmm. The responsibility hmm. of the government is that it should have open mind, open heart. The day Imran Khan came into power, from that day onward, in most of the speeches he says, "I will not shake hand with the thieves." Hmm. Now the question is: the major political parties are People's Party, PMLN, JUI, and other the Maati Islami and other political parties. and most of the people are facing trials okay if he starts running the government with this impression with this concept with this belief that they all are thieves i will not shake hand then there is zero cooperation i just recall i just uh, uh, say that mia shabaz sharif in one of the sessions of the parliament had extended his support for it charter of economy to the government but there was no response at all i don't say that the opposition should not play a responsible role they should also play a responsible role to have a constructive uh, criticism which goes for the betterment of the people which helps the people at large but the major responsibility is of the government if of the government even the prime minister and the other other advisers always provoke always uh, use such languages then on the other side you should not expect that always the sanity will prevail it's just in the response to the provocation it's in response to the so called allegation all the time all the time okay, so let me, let me come back to you uh, rafiq sahab let me come back to you i'm going to go to faisal kareem kundi ji kundi sahab we've been talking about uh, the relationship between the opposition and the government we've also been talking about the fact that generally speaking uh the atmosphere of the assembly is something that uh, you know can be improved quite a uh, you know by by quite a few degrees overall do you think that uh, you know you've also uh, run the house as deputy speaker overall do you think that where do you attribute that responsibility certainly you know just laying it at the door of the government would be too simplistic um wouldn't you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Mother, first of all, I want to say happy new year to all the viewers who are watching and listening your program. Uh, thing is that uh, regarding government and opposition relationship, okay. I think it's too late that relationship should get better. From last okay. three and a half years, we have seen the parliament and we have seen the hmm. government uh, point of view hmm. and their behavior regarding opposition. Hmm. It's totally clear. When you are the government, you have you are on the receiving end. you have to take uh, all the all your allies and opposition along with you in hard situation or whatever but uh, unfortunately the prime minister whenever he comes he always says i don't want to shake hand with opposition hmm. opposition doesn't want to shake hand with you but whenever there is serious issues like that the sovereignty of pakistan issue where is kashmir issue where we have issue with india whatever situation or law and order situation or militancy always opposition has shown a uh, positive response but government has not, never shown the could is let okay you know you're saying that the, the you know the, the prime minister say, say says whatever or he doesn't he refuses to shake hands all of those things but overall as far as the house is concerned if you look at the national assembly uh um, you know i don't know the exact percentage but most of the members there are members who've been there for you know successive governments now whether they sit on this day this side of the the house or that side of the house so these are seasoned politicians one would hope who have um you know a certain background who one would expect would would now know how to conduct themselves uh, and and to have a, you know discussion with some manner of decorum um Do, why do you think that you know regardless of how how the prime minister says or how the prime minister acted it has now boiled down to this is it about pandering to the leadership what is it about no i was talking about the government and opposition issue now if you come to the parliament parliament is normally the national government and the opposition are part of the parliament no that's, that's part of the i am talking about yeah. government and opposition okay. both of the court uh, if you come to the parliament yeah. if you come to special with national assembly hmm. it's been run by the speaker of national assembly their speaker of the national assembly has to Uh, run the house they have to take both 
uh, right side of his uh, hmm. uh, chair and the left side of government and opposition both together with him but unfortunately it's hmm. not been done like that if your bill if your business is coming that, that's hmm. the duty of the speaker that he has to hmm. take both the house both the sides on board and then he has to bring it but normally things happen we bring bring supplementary things other things and we, when the opposition is not on board we, we as a opposition party as a pvp we have written letter to speaker also uh, day before yesterday uh, uh, regarding the bills uh, regarding the uh, audiences which were been passed and then the audience were lapsed and again brought into the into the national assembly so it it can't be brought when things are uh, lapsed how can you bring it to the national assembly and then you you can extend it you can bring it as a bill but thing is the role of the speaker is very important unfortunately the we have as an opposition we have seen the speaker has been biased he has not given a, 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 like a vote to the opposition so and thing is here if you go talk about the serious members of the parliament mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. both house have you ever seen from the government side that that their senior senior or their uh, leadership has not mm-hmm. like majority of time if some senior talk is shamuddin if you take the uh, house and their senior and uh, old politicians who have been in the parliament they are sitting there but they can't say a word the government is always on the same a problem of with the government is that they still think that they are standing on the container talk on container speech on container is something else when you are in the parliament your you, your speech or your act should be different because you you are there as a parliamentarian you have to do legislation you have to do serious right, business we all agree with that right let yeah. me come back to you uh, kundi sahab i'll come back to you ji javed sahab you you've been hearing what uh, uh, you know both pml and uh, ppp you know pti also essentially there is agreement that there should be decorum but there seems to be again that passing of the buck and you know as far as the government is concerned it says that the opposition the opposition seems to think that it should come from the government but my my question is you know what i really want to know is that these are all politicians most of them i would imagine like i said have been there before um have come you know apart from the women seats or selected uh, seats so you know have come uh, those also you know in, in a lot of cases these are people who keep on coming again and again so one would expect they know how to conduct themselves now they've you know they know the assembly like the back of their hand all of those things why do you think it has come to this I it's just the culture uh, it's point scoring what is it unfortunately uh, the politicians look hmm. at themselves as politicians from the opposition hmm. and the politicians from the government hmm. they don't realize that they are the real stakeholders of the system if they damage the system uh, hmm. they will end up uh, at the losing end hmm. and today uh, the opposition believes the more responsibility lies with the government and the government believes that uh, opposition is equally responsible as far as their parliamentary role is concerned or the political role is concerned and blaming the media unfortunately once again is trying to find the scapegoats because hmm. media itself is not the devil hmm. a devil lies somewhere else because media is only hosting the politicians right. when they go there and hmm. they participate in the talk shows hmm. is it the anchor the media person who sort of uh, uh, adjust them to to talk about uh, the Maybe political issues in a way Uh, hmm. the, the language the kind of a language they use the hmm. kind of allegation they hurl against each other and the accusations uh, they sort of level against each other but i, I would go i, I, I would even devil. go a step further and say that maybe they do you know i'm not i mean let's not absolve uh, the journalists including you know uh, the anchors including myself or whatever you know of of egging people on if you want to call it that but the point is that the responsibility ultimately rests with whoever is yes, is absolutely. there absolutely i absolutely uh, uh, the, uh, Um, I mean, basically, they are the opinion makers. Hmm. The politicians, basically, they need to tell the people hmm. uh, what exactly they would like uh, people to to uh, to uh, how they move forward. Hmm. And uh, people just look at the politicians as the role model, and the role hmm. model is basically not the very ideal one. But have we come to this point where <clears throat> now this is the way things are, so that you know we don't find it odd anymore? Because but Maruf, just... what is stopping them to to go for certain? a kind of a code of conduct as mm. far as the parliamentary pro- proceedings are concerned mm. all politicians those mm. who are part of right today they are mm. part of the parliamentary uh, democracy they have mm. been there for a long long time mm. if they believe honestly and genuinely that things are not going the right the right way the direction mm. is mm. Uh, probably not the right direction why can't they sit together and evolve a certain a certain kind of code of conduct uh, to behave in the parliament because these images are 
are being shown on television screens. And uh, as you mentioned, what happened a couple of days ago, this is not going well with the people of Pakistan. But because, this is what uh, because ultimately, hmm. you are, tr you, I mean, uh, 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 I don't know. It's not by design. Mm -hmm. I really don't believe it is by design. But uh, some or the other people are be they feeling dejected mm -hmm. and dismayed uh, with the whole political structure of Pakistan. No, but but when they, are, um, they know, feel dejected with the whole political process in Pakistan, why, why, why can't they understand that they are mature people, the politicians, mm -hmm. they are the leaders, they are the representatives of the mm -hmm. people's aspirations, they are sitting in the parliament for the uh, for the uh, last several decades. They can sit in the parliament. I'm I'm talking about every uh, political party, not just the opposition of the mm. government. Mm. Every political party, major or minor, has uh, their responsibility. Mm. They can evolve a code of conduct. They can have a proceeding mm. uh, which is parliamentary, which is decent, mm. and uh, uh, which is representative of the people of Pakistan. Do you so agree that it, 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 uh, the responsibility rests with whoever runs the house to a degree, or do you think that you know, uh, we, they, simply the politicians can't be absolved of? Uh, yeah, Yes, uh, absolutely, Maruk. I mean, uh, it's not the government. Government mm. is uh, probably one of the stakeholders in the parliament. Mm. Opposition is equally represented by the people. They are the stakeholders. They are part of the parliament. Mm. How can they be exonerated what is happening over there? Mm. I mean, uh, blaming all the time the government, government responsible. Uh, how can you absolve the, uh, the, the opposition from, uh, the, uh, from the decent norms of democracy? If they can do whatever they are doing, I mean, they, they, and they are justifying it as well. So equally, uh, the the blame goes to the government as like well. Like for example, you know, the slapping and all of physical fighting that is absolutely. now, you, it has and come to this. Yes, and, I, think, but, I, I, I think you can oppose each other's views. Uh, you can confront each other politically, mm, ideologically. Mm. But going physical. And but is it also about? I mean, as far as the leadership, the responsibility of the leadership. I'm going to go to uh, uh, Jawad Sab. Ji, Jawad Sab, as far as the the responsibility of the leadership is concerned, do you think that it also? I mean, if there's if if there is a kind of, um, you know, uh, as far as a reaction from from uh, or accountability, so to speak, from the leadership, then perhaps you know uh, the members of the house will be more uh, more careful. I mean, it is rather like you know a child being told off uh, by a, a teacher or whatever you may call it. But perhaps it has come to that, and if you have that kind of uh, you know reaction, uh, then perhaps the the they, they will be more tamed, they'll be more careful, wouldn't you say? Farooq, I think uh, what we need to understand is how the such kind of political culture it gets evolved. Okay. I think. Uh, uh, first of all, the political culture will be evolving from the moral and social values of that society. We must keep it in mind. We cannot uh, uh, discuss this subject without uh, uh, by putting these things uh, separate. They are all integrated, well integrated. Mm -hmm. So it is the society, uh, the values and the morals of the society which uh, creates a political culture. Then the demonstration of that political culture uh, obviously need forums. Parliament is one of them. Uh, television, TV talk shows is one of them. Social media is one of them. Press conference is one of them. So these are the forums. We cannot uh, talk in isolation that why the political culture is uh, bad in parliament. The political culture is same everywhere. And it is, it is reflecting the society. You must keep it in mind that is, it is reflecting the society. And when I say it is reflecting the society, the biggest evidence of my statement is the biggest forum in Pakistan today, which is participated by 100 million Pakistanis, is social media. You go 24-7 every second, every minute on social media, you will see the reflection of Pakistani values and norms in the conversation. It is abusive. It is insulting. It is uh, 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 intolerance. So the similar culture obviously go into the political culture and the political culture get demonstrated on different forums starting from parliament and TV channel and social media. 
So, I mean, I, I we... agree with you as far as, you know, the general intolerance of society is concerned. I agree with you about the fact that, you know, there is abuse on social media. But, um, you know, I, I, I would defer with you and I will go to everybody else here who, uh, you know, what their opinion is on this. But one would expect the members of the houses to act in a better manner, you know. Uh, rather than uh, the abusive culture on social media, the abusive culture outside, one expects better or should expect better. I mean, it's really sad. Maybe people to, are learning from the politicians. To, yes, and you know, for, Maro, for the people I, I, who I vote for, for, for these parliamentarians. I, I, Ji. Yeah, I just want to give one comment. Uh, Maru, what you are saying is, it is like that the parliament is an untouched island of this society. Hmm. No, my dear. The parliament is part of the society from where the people are coming into the parliament, from okay. the society which we belong. It is the reflection of the similar society. If you discuss okay. in isolation each one of them, it is like mm -hmm. that you want to evolve something like sanity and civilization in an untouched island. It is only possible if it is an untouched, untouched island. Okay. So G it cannot be separated. We have to accept that it is our social reflection. Hmm. Okay, let me let me come back to you. Ji, Kundi sahab, would you agree? You think that, you know, as far as what Jawad sahab is saying, he's saying that essentially our society is intolerant and essentially the abuse <laughs> is right there. And that is what's happening in the assembly also and it can't be viewed in isolation from uh, who we've become. Would you agree with what he's saying? Are our parliamentarians no better? Can you hear me? I think there's a problem with his audio. G, um, Javed sahab, do you think that, you know, essentially it's it's just the same and, you know, it doesn't matter what Javad sahab is saying. I, I, I agree with him. I mean, you can't, in, in a sense, view uh, the parliament in isolation of the way we've become as a society. But then again, wouldn't you expect them to be better, to do better, to be, a, to, to be better role models, so to speak? Maruk, if we accept this uh, particular logic, then mm. that means that the, the chaos in our society and uh, the, the society which is in total disarray, mm. uh, it is kind of a justification that things would mm. continue the way uh, mm. they are right now. Because if you justify the behavior of the parliamentarians on the basis of the behavior of the people at large, hmm. but I really don't agree with that because the parliamentarians are the most responsible people, hmm. they rep represent the aspirations of the people, hmm. and they are the role model, they are the opinion makers, hmm. and their behavior is reflected by the people. Hmm. It is the other way around, not what is being said. Hmm. People reflect what is happening in the parliament, not the parliamentarians reflecting what is happening on the street because when people look at the parliamentarians mm. going for each other's throats, slapping mm. each other, then I think they, will f they would find uh, the justification that, well, if our leadership could do that, maybe it is justified. It mm. is morally justified. It and is the lack of justified. respect, generally speaking, for politicians uh, now. I mean, ev everywhere, I think if, if there was a survey, it would be, model. you know, at, at, at an all-time high. Even, uh, even Maruk, if there is a kind of anarchic uh, society in Pakistan, mm. Mm. and whose responsibility is it to change that particular culture? Right. It is the responsibility of the politicians at large, when we expect whether them to they make belong laws, to the opposition right, or the right. government. And the parliament is the collective forum they, mm. they can, I mean, they can set themselves as a role model mm. and then they can expect from the people of people at large that they should mm. behave the way they would like them to behave. So I, I believe uh, uh, this is not a justified Gee, kind Rajwana of argument. Sahib, overall, uh, you know, as far as, uh, let's move on, as far as uh, the issue of mini budget is concerned, as far as the issue of IMF is concerned, for example, on these issues, you know, the, the opposition clearly, uh, you know, if it were any other, uh, other government, there's across the board agreement that there really doesn't as far as the government is concerned any government at this time would have had no other option but to go to the IMF do you think that the way that the, the opposition reacted to the mini budget uh, could have been uh, different could have been better could have been managed in, in in a better manner the protest itself could have been managed in a better manner actually had it been uh, presented and even before presentation, the mini budget, there should have been some discussion in between the political parties, the opposition, and the treasury benches or the government, whatsoever it is, 
the procedure I know because I had also been twice a parliamentarian also. The question is that uh, I would also refer, just refresh the memory that uh, earlier 30 laws were uh, passed by the National Assembly in uproar without following the procedure. Mm -hmm. So if the situation could have been handled, the only solution would have been that before presentation, a mm -hmm. confidence building measure should be taken. And just at the cost of repetition, I reiterate that mm -hmm. if the government creates a situation mm -hmm. of animosity, situation of correct, correct assassination, mm -hmm. situation of uh, creating problems and mm -hmm. everything which possibly can be said against the person, against his honor, against his dignity, against his women folk, against his family, against People's Party, against VMLN, against JUI, and particularly when utterances from the mouth of the Prime Minister. So mm -hmm. these are the backgrounds which has deteriorated the situation, which has added fuel in the fire. So right. the situation could, listen, listen, situation could have been controlled. And when we talk the up, regarding the uproar and uh, disturbance in the parliament, it usually happens. I'm not supporting that, but it usually happens. The situation could have been controlled by the government, by adopting precautionary measures and adopting confidence building measures before presentation of many budget. Irrespective right, of that, let me, let me go that, to that, the... it, just, just listen. They, the opposition was watching the grievances of the people who have been crushed, who have been just breathing for the cost of living. Otherwise, they do not want to live because of this price hike, because of this inflation, because of this bad governance, because of this misgovernance. So, the question is, forget about the opposition. Just listen to the independent media people, the senior anchors who had been favoring throughout the present regime, know what they are saying. Forget about the opposition. So, these are the backgrounds, these are the things which have brought the situation to this level that we are discussing this issue and which has right, led okay. to the uproar in the parliament. The opposition Gee, has Rana to sir, do let something. Let me come back to you. Gee. Ahmed Jawad sahab, would you answer that? You think that th those confidence building measures that Rajwana sahab is talking about, the government could have perhaps extended uh, a hand and tried to get the opposition at least uh, to, you know, understand them, to, to build confidence like Rajwana sahab is saying, you know, those measures would perhaps reduce this kind of uh, atmosphere um, a little bit. Uh, Maruch, uh, with your permission, uh, I just would like to clarify uh, mm -hmm. A few comments uh, uh, made by uh, Javed Jadun Saab. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, I am not justifying the uh, 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 the uh, I mean the conduct of politician in the parliament. What mm -hmm. I am trying to employ is uh, uh, to dig out the reasons, to investigate mm -hmm. the reasons of mm -hmm. such conduct in the parliament. So right. it's not justifying. It is just. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 you know, talking about the reasons that uh, mm. how we have reached to this stage. Mm. The second thing is, uh, if we are living in a world of idealism, yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, when a person who has been trained uh, in a society where mm. his uh, moral values, his social values are qu questionable, are mm. uh, he is uh, uh, the reflection of uh, the society what it is. And mm. one day, he, uh, uh, he comes in the parliament because he has mm. been elected. And mm. now we want, uh, we expect from him to act as a role model. I think mm. it is kind of a very ideal situation. How mm. a person who has been trained, you know, in a society in a different way, and now he is expected to act as a role model, it will not be possible. But yes, uh, parliament is the highest forum Ideally speaking, we expect that the people sitting in the parliament, they mm. should be acting as role model. They mm. should be setting some standards for mm. the rest of the society, especially for mm. the youth, whether mm. it is parliament or the TV channels. Mm. Yes, ideally speaking, and as a matter of principle, yes. Now, the second question that uh, there should be some confidence building measures. Mm. Uh, Maruk, it is a matter of taking initiatives and I, I would say that taking initiatives from government or opposition uh, is always good. 
and if it is coming from the government it is even better because mm. uh, the government is powerful uh, uh, and uh, if the initiative is coming from the powerful uh, it has more impact so mm. i don't mind that if the government uh, uh, comes up with some confidence building measures uh, mm. which can bring some sanity uh, in parliament and also on the media uh, about the role and conduct of politicians no but i know of course you know personally you don't mind and and um, i've uh, of course heard you over the course of time um, on my show also but overall what would you say what is behind in your opinion this kind of i mean lack of initiative one can then say from the government as far as taking these confidence building measures are concerned or taking up the offer of uh, shehbaz sharif sahab when he talked about economic charter all of those things perhaps that would have resulted in a better relationship between the government and the opposition it would have been a more cordial more workable so to speak you know because we need a working relationship i think it would be beneficial for everyone i think uh, uh, there was a word uh, used by uh, rafiq saab that uh, provocation from hmm. the pti i think the hmm. similar provocation uh, pti also received from the opposition when the opposition mm -hmm. started the parliament hmm. with the word hmm. selective selected for uh, prime minister and uh, then uh, uh, selected uh, government so you know this is also a uh, kind of provocation then what do you expect that then how the government is going to re uh, react so i mm. think provocation is from both sides but at the end of the day uh, uh, maruf your question lies what is the solution and the mm. solutions are provided by the government solutions are, should be provided by the government so the mm. government should come up with some kind of confidence building measure which can improve the atmosphere uh, in the parliament and opposition should cooperate with that at least just the ji javed sir just the atmosphere i mean i'm not saying that the the opposition has to bow down to what or or has to come essentially in agreement with whatever the government is doing because of course their job is to oppose but they can do it in a rather more dignified manner Yes, absolutely. I think there's no, there are no two opinions that uh, differences always exist between the opposition and the government, and mm. in every uh, democracy in the world, mm. politicians do differ on policies. They differ mm. on uh, uh, certain issues, mm. and on, on the basis of their manifestos and their mm. own uh, manifest policies as well. And I think rightly pointed out by Jawad Sahab that it is the government, and government should come forward with some kind of a. modus operandi and they should uh, engage the opposition uh, to evolve certain kind of code of, i think without a code of uh, code of conduct there is going to be no sanity in the parliament it is about time that the saner elements from all uh, political parties they should together they must find out a way forward that when there is a debate it should be a decent Javitha, debate another, should another be a civilized thing, debate another uh, interesting thing you know and another interesting question is does do you think that it even concerns the general politician yes i think do that think is the biggest concern do you think it even bothers them anymore i don't think that is the biggest so. concern that uh, do they realize that mm. uh, their behavior or their conduct as politicians as parliamentarians as cabinet ministers is uh, basically representing the true essence of their own very own political mm. parties because whatever kind of manifestos they uh, they written and they uh, they sort of disseminated among the people of pakistan i mean they are going uh, uh, in a, in a very uh, opposite direction hmm. and uh, when they are going to realize that it is about time and now they should i mean they should change whatever is happening what has what has been happening in the past as well hmm. rajwana sahab is one of the senior elements in pmln but hmm. even the pmln's uh, parliamentary history is not very hmm. i mean praiseworthy uh, they have there have not been any a stellar performance and part of their own party because mm. we know as media persons as well memory is not very short maybe the memory of the people is short mm. what happened in the parliament when the presidents they delivered their own uh, uh, annual addresses and how the pmln behaved over there mm. so i think the traditions go on mm. only blaming the government of the day right now uh, would be a bit unjustified as far as P pti is concerned Uh, P uh, PTI is the first time uh, they have come mm. into power. They are there for the last three and a half years. Mm. But PMLN and the PPP they have been in power for the last three four decades. So I, I think more responsibility lies on the opposition as well. Mm. If they say they are the mature politicians, they are responsible politicians, and they know how uh, people feel about certain policies of the PTI, 
you can talk about uh, the PTI's policies well. There's no problem with that. You can criticize hmm. as amount as possible. But even going uh, for the personal attacks as far as the position is concerned can't be justified. And then, uh, having said that, hmm. once again, I would like to appreciate what Jawad Sab said. He, hmm. being part of the ruling party, hmm. being part of the, uh, the, the ruling PTI party, hmm. he said that hmm. more responsibility lies with the uh, sitting government. And I think it has been the case in every uh, political dispensation. Hmm. And even today, I think uh, some responsible people, sane people, and mature people, and senior right. people, Unfortunately, from the PTI should come forward and uh, engage the opposition. Right. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for being with us, Javed Jadun Sahib. Thank you for joining us. Ahmed Jawad Sahib, thank you for being with us today. Faisal Kareem Kundi Sahib, Rafiq Rajana Sahib, thank you for making the time. Overall, as far as the issue of, uh, you know, what, what's of particular concern as far as uh, uh, the, the National Assembly, if we talk about what happened a few days ago, um, or if we talk about overall the atmosphere of the National Assembly, the Senate, you know, the, the, the two the houses of parliament uh, are concerned. Uh, what is of concern is, does it actually bother uh, the average politician, the average member uh, at this time? Does it even matter to, to them how the, the house is being run, the way that the, the behavior overall, the ruckus there? Um, you know, one thing I'd like to say, of course, as far as the information minister is concerned, his tweet would suggest that he himself is is certainly, um, you know, it concerns him and one hopes that overall this is the general, it is a cause for concern, at least there is a realization that this behavior, this ruckus, um, you know, what it has come to, the brawls, the slapping, is not uh, the kind of image that we would like, uh, the country's image that we would like uh, to be seen all over. Uh, let's hope that our politicians can also reflect on that. When we talk about the mini budget, of course, it's extremely, it's extremely important. When we talk about price hike inflation, government's performance, all of those things, certainly they're very, very important and we talk about them. But side by side, it's also important to perhaps reflect on the kind of politicians, the kind of houses of parliament, the kind of political culture we are now inculcating into our other next generations also. Uh, you know, our other next generations who want to come into politics, who are, you know, aspiring politicians, all of those things, I think are extremely important uh, because we need to breed tolerance. We've seen what happened, uh, you know, on the wholly unrelated matter, but that is, you know, where intolerance reaches its uh, height when we talk about the Seal Court incident. So let's hope that we can learn to tolerate each other. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, on Perspective.